This video is going to show you how to calculate work from a graph from a force that varies over time. So far in what we've looked at, we have an acceleration that's constant. Now, looking at Newton's second law, that means that our force is also constant. So if I was to graph this as a graph of force versus time, or force, force versus distance, I would get a horizontal line. So here I have a constant force of 10 Newtons. This allows us to create an equation for the work. Work is equal to force parallel times d, that is, parallel to the displacement. So here's what our graph looks like for that kind of thing. But let's look at this a little bit closer. So work is force parallel times d. Here's the force, 10 newtons, and let's say it moves 10 meters across. So 10 meters is the displacement. That would look like this. Well, if I look at this more closely, I see it's height times width. It's that space right there, and that's the area. So area is equal to work. The area bounded by the curve and the axis is equal to the work. And then the left and right sides are bounded by the displacement. So the area bounded by the curve and the axis is equal to the work. All right, so how does this, what does this look like in our solution? I would look at the sum of all the energy at one location plus the work done by the graph equals the sum of the energy at a second location. Let's look at an example. This is Polly, my pocket-sized pet pachyderm. And Polly is pedaling along. She's really small at 100 kilograms. And she enters an incline. At the bottom of the incline, she begins to coast 10 meters up the incline until she comes to a rest. But the only reason why she comes to a rest is because she applies a force. And her force looks like this. So you can see it's not a straight line going across the whole graph. It varies over time. For the first 5 meters, it's constant, but between 5 and 10, it changes. So my formula, work is equal to force times distance, will only work for part of this problem. It won't work for the whole thing. Between 5 and 10 meters, it doesn't work anymore. So in order to find the work in that case, I'll need to find the area between the axis and the curve. So let's see how to solve the problem. To find the initial velocity at the bottom. To begin with, my initial setup says the total energy at the bottom of the hill minus the work of the stopping force equals the energy at the top of the hill. But remember, I can't just do the work of the stopping force anymore because it varies. So instead, i got to have the work of the graph. So whenever you're given a graph that represents work, you just add the work of the graph. If the graph is negative, it will be addition of a negative number. If the graph is positive, you'll just add a positive value. So here it is. That's the area between 0 and 5 meters. So that's a rectangle, so I'll use height times width, or base times height. And that's 5 times negative 10 is the height. Notice on the graph it goes down to negative 10, and that process gives me negative 50 joules. So I know that that area represents negative 50 joules of work. So it's something that's slowing them down, removing energy. And for the triangle, that's going to be 1 half base times height for the area. So 1 half the base, which is 5 meters, and the height, which is negative 10, that's negative 25 joules. So the total work is going to be negative 75 joules. That's what I'm going to put in down in my expression eventually for the rid work of the graph. Next step, Ke plus Pe equals work of the graph, which equals Ke plus Pe. So I look at it, the Ke and Pe part, I look at the physical setup like I've always done, and I ask those same questions. At the bottom of the hill, is, uh, is the elephant moving? Yes, we think so, so I'll keep that energy. At the bottom of the hill, is it above the other location's height? No, it's not above it, so I'm going to get rid of that potential hill energy at the bottom of the hill. The work of the graph comes from the graph. Now let's look at the right-hand side. The kinetic energy, is it moving, or is the elephant moving at the top of the hill? And no, he's not. It's come to rest. Is he above the other location's height? Yes, he is, so I'll keep that. All right, next step, plug in my equations. 1F mv squared plus work of the graph equals mgh. Next step, numbers and units. Notice for the work of the graph, I just put in my answer that I calculated earlier of negative 75 joules. And then from there, I solve. And I get that the speed of the elephant at the bottom of the hill is 4.59 meters per second. So now the question is, what does this look like on your sheet of paper? Here's the question. So there's the diagram and the description of it. And the graph, and you can see I've already started to solve it on the graph. And this is what the whole page looks like. And then when I shrink it down, that's what my final work looks like. There's all my lines of everything I need to show for credit. 